Hey everyone, it's VM Campos, Magic Fan. I've got a brand new deck tech video for you. I'm gonna show you a really cool Theros only deck in my favorite color. If you know all about me, you know that it's either gonna be black and blue, black and white, or mono black. And you're right. I'm gonna do the Theros Beyond Death mono black devotion deck. So this deck is pretty straightforward. There's many four ofs in the build, which gives you a little bit of wiggle room to change things up as you wish. So at the very beginning, as a one casting cost sorcery, we've got Fruit of Tyzeras. This deals two damage to a player, obviously your opponent. So for one black mana, a loss of two life, nice. Then it's got escape. Four mana, plus three cards, and it comes back from your graveyard over and over and over. This card has worked really well to put the final bit of damage to my opponent. Next up, one of my most favorite cards that comes out of Theros Beyond Death is Agonizing Remorse. One and a black for a sorcery. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from it, or a card from their graveyard. Exile that card and you lose one life. So we don't have Thoughtseize in this format, but we do have Agonizing Remorse, with all, which also lets you get something out of your opponent's graveyard. And there's so much graveyard shenanigans happening here that you're really going to need to agonize that remorse. Uh, yeah, I think that joke works. Meyer's Grasp is the next card. One black and one more. For an enchantment aura, a creature gets minus three, minus three. So this is going to let you take out a lot of your opponent's creatures or weaken some of their strongest ones. Something comes in as a 4-4, nope, now it's a 1-1. It's mired in the grasp. Double black gets you Timaret, chosen from death. This is a 2-0. Legendary enchantment creature. And his toughness is equal to your devotion to black. So if you haven't figured it out by now, there's a lot of devotion to black in this deck, which will have a big payoff, which might be a little bit obvious, but we'll get to that. So anyway, you can easily have this as a 2-2 two -two for two, or get bigger and bigger in toughness as you have more devotion. Then this is fun. One in a black, activated ability, exile up to two target cards from graveyards, from any graveyard. You gain one life for each creature card exiled this way. So obviously you mostly use this to whittle away your opponent's graveyard so they cannot escape and gives you a little bit of life gain. If you need some life gain, if you're in dire straits, exile your own stuff if necessary. Now all cards so far have been four of, but this one is two of and you can decide to swap out other cards to add more. This is the Woe Strider, our three casting cost creature. It's a horror, and it's a 3-2. When the Woe Strider enters the battlefield, create a 0-1 white goat creature token. So it comes with a little goat. And what can you do with that goat? Well, sacrifice it, of course, to scry one. Sacrifice another creature is the activated ability for free. So let's say your Timaret is on the battlefield and it's about to get killed. Well, why not instead sacrifice it to your own Woe Strider to see the future? It can escape for five mana and an exile of four other cards. And when it does, it comes back as a five, four with another goat. This card is truly the goat. We've got a mana rock in this deck, Altar of the Pantheon, three casting cost artifact, Tap and add one mana of any color. If you control a god, demigod, or legendary enchantment, you gain one life. So we will have Timaret in the deck, so that means we will gain a life off of that. That's nice, but it's also a mana rock. But wait a minute, the static ability, your devotion to each color and each combination of colors is increased by one. So more devotion for this deck is more good. Forecasting cost instant, drag to the underworld. Now this has actually a cost reduction because it's Two generic plus black black as the casting cost. However, this spell costs X less to cast, where X is your devotion to black. If you've got Timaret out on the battlefield, this is a black black instant destroy target creature spell. Very nice. The next creature is a four casting cost, four four enchantment creature, demon, the nightmare shepherd. It's got flying, which is very nice to pressure your opponent in the air. 
but wait, it's got the ability. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, you may exile it. If you do, create a token that's a copy of the creature, except it's a 1-1 and it's a nightmare in addition to other types. So let's say your Wolf Strider dies, you can exile it and it comes back as a 1-1 with the exact copy of the card stats, meaning it also has the black pips, so it still applies to your devotion. Tokens normally don't, but this specifically says a copy, so it copies everything about the card as it last existed. Now we're building up all this devotion for two things. One is for Erebos, the Bleak Hearted, a forecasting cost legendary enchantment creature god. It's a 5-6 and indestructible, but it's not a creature until you reach 5 devotion. With the altar of Pantheon and all of your other black focus creatures, that shouldn't be too hard. But even if you don't have the devotion, you have this static ability. Whenever another creature you control dies, you may pay 2 life if you do draw a card. So you got some good life draw after you sacrifice that goat to the strider, for example, and that's double the action. You're going to scry and draw that card if you pay that life. Remember to order your triggers properly. One in a black, plus sacrifice another creature. Target creature gets minus two, minus one. So if you need to sacrifice your own creature, you can give your opponent's creature minus two, minus one, and then pay the life to draw that card. And lastly, all of this devotion is given as tribute to the Grey Merchant of Asphodel. Five casting cost, two four creature, zombie. He's got two black pips in his casting cost, so if you just need to put the final two points of damage, summon Gary all by himself, and that's two damage, plus you gain two life. Obviously, you'll want to have as many black pips on the battlefield as you could, and this could be pretty impressive if you cast more than one Gary as the game goes on. Next up, 18 Swamps. I've gone with the Underworld version of the Swamps. And then 4 Field of Ruin. It gives you colorless mana, or lets you destroy your opponent's precious lands. Non-basic lands, that is. That dual land is no more, they have to now pick a plain old land. Plus, you'll replace this field with your own Swamp. And lastly, in the sideboard. It's not too complex at the moment, but let's say you're dealing with your opponent's Graveyard. Well, Soul Guide Lantern is what you need. This is a one casting cost artifact, and when it enters the battlefield, you can exile one target card from any graveyard. Obviously, so if your opponent's playing that pesky cat, get it out of the graveyard as soon as you bring in this lantern. And then, tap and sacrifice the lantern. For no outlay of mana, exile each opponent's graveyard. So when your opponent is about to bring back their cat, their Cauldron Familiar, they've paid the, the casting cost of the food, there is a trigger for you to respond to, for you to exile that graveyard, and the cat won't come back. If you don't need to deal with that, well, one and a tap, sack the lantern, draw a card. If your opponent is dealing with a lot of pesky enchantments, we finally have a black instant to deal with it. Farika's Libation. For three mana, one of which is black, you can instantly target your opponent to sacrifice a creature, or better yet, target your opponent to sacrifice an enchantment. Black doesn't have many answers to deal with enchantments, and I'm glad this has been printed at common, so it's definitely in the sideboard. The last thing that makes this deck perfect is you've got to have the proper sleeves. I have the unlocked mono black sleeves that I earned here in Arena, but any other sleeve will work just fine. Maybe you've got Fibble Thip that will help you earn that devotion. Or how about a really cool Dimir Locket? Ooh, I love how it shines. What you really have to do is get that black sleeve for your black deck to run with your black heart. All right, let's give this a shot here. We're battling Peso Pluma. We're in big trouble because they're using the Teferi Avatar. Now my opening hand is cool. I've got my card in hand that will let me plan things better. So I'll just drop a land. My opponent is thinking and then they drop their life gain. Okay, that's fine. Time to do ours. Agonizing Remorse. And there's a lot to pick from here. 
But I think the best bet will be to get out that smothering tithe. We don't need them to build up their mana base. After all, Boros doesn't have much. It can do that way. Dawn of Hope to create some tokens. We've got a land so that we can bring out the Woe Strider. So I'll be able to scry that goat soon enough. Your turn, opponent. They drop a tap land. Okay, it's gonna be my turn, but let's take a look at the future. And no, I don't need that Fruit of Teason at the moment. Instead, I'm rewarded with another Agonizing Remorse. Ooh, let's get that Outlaw's Merriment out of here now because they're about to summon it and get a lot of creatures coming my way. So good thing I got rid of that. Okay, they play a land and they played an Outlaw's Merriment. Total top deck. You're so lucky, Peso Pluma. You're so lucky. Okay, let's get out the Nightmare Shepherd. Go in for three damage. And now we're about to get a bunch of tokens coming at us. Divine Visitation, which will, means they're about to create lots of 4 4s. They're not thinking of attack. Oh, they are attacking. Oh, okay, never mind. So, anyway, they're about to create a whole bunch of angels from their auto generator. Well, first of all, let's get rid of one of these lifelink merriment guys. We go in with 7 damage. Okay, they're down to 8. I have my kill spell ready to go. They have a free 4-4 creature. Looks pretty scary. Okay, they're about to Conclave Tribunal, obviously, my my creature. But instead, I will first drag to the Underworld that Precious Angel. And then they think they're about to get the Nightmare Shepherd. And nope, instead it'll be better as a sacrifice for me to scry to the future. I don't need that uh, direct damage again, so we'll skip that. There's another Gary. I don't quite need that Gary yet. I need mana. But, whoops, we've got another 4-4 four, four Angel ready to come at us. Very good blocker. Heraldic Banner is going to give it a plus 1, plus 0, so that's 5 in the air. They're going to make another <laughs> Angel token, so let's get rid of this other Angel token. So they've got an Angel. There's my fifth land. Okay, Gary, come on in here. That drops them down to two life, not going to attack of course. They're gonna make one more angel, that's 10 damage in the air. Drop another land to make another angel, okay. And they have enough mana for one more angel. I guess I'm dead, I better concede here. They're about to do 20 damage to me. Yep, so that's gonna go through, no problem, 16 life. And what is it that I have in my hand? The Grey Merchant of Asphodel. So let's have him come join the party. Good thing he's not legendary. GG, Peso Pluma. GG. Never mess with Mono Black. So what do you think about this build? Tell me in the comments how you would improve it. Remember, it's a Theros Beyond Death only build. I'd love to hear your thoughts. But what about if we include the whole wealth of standard cards? I've had a lot of fun with this deck as well, putting in a few Bolas's Citadels. Or how about Colin Familiar plus Witch's Oven? Tell me about it in the comments. Let's make the best Mono Black Devotion deck in standard. If you liked this video, don't forget to head on over to patreon.com slash vmcampos to see many more deck tech videos much more content about Magic the Gathering, you can follow for free to be alerted to everything that I do, such as my Magic Arena focused podcast. It releases every Friday. Follows are free. Or if you go up to the $1 tier, you'll unlock exclusive stuff like more advanced deck techs. At the $2 range, I'll actually mail you a Magic card in thanks, straight from my collection. No, not a Black Lotus. In any event, the follow would be great. Liking, commenting, sharing would also be excellent. This has been VM Campos, and I'll see you in the underworld.